So apparently, if you want to uh, deal with nerves, you uh, have to picture you all in your underwear. <laughs> Fuck, I'm hard. <laughs> that, that's real nice. What's that, Victoria? Si so, not you, ma'am. The, the man to your right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my girlfriend saw how uh, just terrified I was of this. And she's like, it's okay, honey. And you can perform for five minutes. If I'm lucky. And I said, hey! And she's like, no, 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 no. Um, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh, I forgot the next bit, I'll get there. Um, oh, after you do it, you'll, be, you'll, you'll, you'll think to yourself, oh, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't as hard as you thought. <laughs> or as you promised. <laughs> um, but... I thought that was pretty funny, so I said, hey, can I use that on stage? She said, no. And I said, well, I'm going to use it anyway, and you can't stop me. She says, why is that? And I said, because you're not even real. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just made you up. And at the end of this joke, poof. And as she left, she's like, well... I bet after that performance you're going to cry yourself to sleep too. Aww. And I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, my girlfriend, she doesn't like my long hair, but she likes my beard. And I know that there's girls out there who don't just like beards. They love beards. Have we got any like, like real beard lovers in the crowd tonight? We've got one down here and I can't see the rest of you, so I'm just going to pretend... Yeah, like you all love beards. Oh, there you go, there you go, thank you, I grew up myself. Um, but um, yeah, when you do get these, uh, these real beard lovers, right, and they, uh, they get real drunk and you can see them because they just, they just look right at your beard. And they'll just come in, and they'll just, they'll, they'll come in with the bravado, the confidence, and just the creepy sleaze of Donald Trump. <laughs> and they'll just grab you right by the face, pussy. And just say, <laughs> I love beards, and I'll slap that hand away. And I'll say, how would you like it? <laughs> I like boobs. And you've got, you've got very nice breasts, but how would you like it if I was drunk and leery and I came up to you and I just went, oh, there's really nice tits. You wouldn't like it at all. I'm a person. Nobody likes to be objectified. <laughs> and my eyes are up here. <laughs> it's going alright. Uh, okay, so Superman, Superman, here's a little jump. I always feel like a hero having long hair. Why? Superman had a pair of glasses. Superman? Oh, sorry. Superman, Clark Kent. Superman, Clark Kent. And everyone's just like, oh, they, they, no one would fall for that. You'd see that it's Superman. And I, uh, I don't think you would. I don't think you'd see that it was Superman. I can prove it. Because something even smaller than glasses. One minute, I'm a barista. The next minute, I'm fucking Jesus. <laughs> now, it doesn't take much to be called Jesus. Like, you seriously just have to have long hair and a beard. That's it. And I figured everyone looked like Jesus then. I mean, this was on the outskirts of the Roman Empire. There was a great shortage of barbers and hairdressers. I mean, it wasn't suitable women's work in the day. And all the gay men were off in Rome having gay sex. Or as the Romans called it, sex. Yeah. So it, it would actually happen a lot. This is what uh, inspired this whole bit. Um, I'd be out, you know, I'd like to do karaoke, and there's always drunk people at karaoke, and they'd always be like, hey, hey Jesus. And, you know, I started, ended up, you know, working out just comebacks. And I'd be like, shh, don't tell anyone I'm here. <laughs> It really didn't work out for me last time. <laughs> the guy bumps into me, he's like, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. And like, 
I forgive you. So, the Bible's a collection of stories. If it's, they've got good stories, they throw it in the Bible, and there's a lot of, like, uh, what do they call them? Gospels that never made it to the Bible. One of them was called the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, and it talked about Jesus from age 2 to age 12. Now, in the regular Bible, the one we all get, it's only going to like he's 2 and he's 30. What happened in the middle? I reckon he was a prick. <laughs> you think about it. Has anyone, have people here have got kids? Kids. They have no empathy. Like, we have to teach them empathy. Don't hit your sister. How would you like it if she hit you? Share that. How would you like it if people didn't share with you? They don't start off nice. <laughs> now, just imagine if that kid had a gun and you couldn't take it off him. That was baby Jesus. Let me explain. One time, he was, uh, it was on the Sabbath and he was supposed to be, you know, just chillaxing as you do on the Sabbath. But he wasn't. He was busy making little birds out of clay and then animating them to life and watching them fly away. <laughs> and a kid told on him, like, Jesus, you can't do that on the Sabbath. And uh, so he went and found the kid. And he, he said to the kid, you will wither like a tree. You will bear no fruit, all leaves, nor roots. <laughs> and killed him. He just killed him. And then another kid bumped into him and spit, killed him. He killed a whole bunch of people. He, got, he killed so many people in his home village that uh, the, the, everyone wanted to, wanted to run him out of town. And so he, he resurrected them and he left. <laughs> now this bit isn't, isn't covered. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just following that story on from there. You think about it. Young adolescent, unlimited access to booze. I mean, water to wine. <laughs> Nobody likes him. Nobody's ever liked him. He hasn't worked out. He, was, he never learnt to be nice to anyone because, hey, yeah, what are you going to do? I'll kill you. <laughs> I could just imagine, he, and like, his dad, his dad was a god. He was god. He would have been like the biggest, like, trust fund baby prick. He'd get real drunk. Everyone's only hanging out because of the free wine. And he'd, he'd get a little bit boozed and he'd be like, Do you know who my dad is? <laughs> Do you know who my dad is? Everybody get out! And I'm like, Jesus, we're outside. And he's like, Jesus, get out. Oh, I messed up that joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what have I done? I've, uh, I've covered sex and I've covered religion. I guess all, all that leaves is race. Hmm. Now, I can't do a racial joke because I'm white. However, I'm actually half Asian. It's true. This isn't a joke. I am actually half Asian. I just don't look half Asian. Um, my mum's from the Middle East. And most people are like, that's not in Asia. I'm like, who's the racist now? Yes, the Middle East is in Asia. So, I'm half Asian. Um, so... <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd just finish with, uh, you know, just to get the trifecta, sex, religion, race, with the, with the racial joke. Um, and so it was a struggle. I'll tell you what, it was a struggle. So I said to my girlfriend... <laughs> said to my girlfriend, yeah, I'm uh, half Australian and half uh, Middle Eastern. And she says, uh, oh, so you're half convict and half terrorist. I'm like, ooh. Well, no, I can work with this. I can work with this. And I said, well, if I'm a, con if I'm a convict, I'm going to steal your heart. Aww. And if I'm a terrorist, I'm going to hold it hostage, demand the release of political prisoners, you must ease sanctions, and get your military bases out of our territories. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Thank you. Adrian Richards!